Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, who offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. So for the past two weeks, I've been shooting with this camera, the Minolta TC1. It's this incredibly tiny 35mm point and shoot, which is really packed full of features. And I thought I'd do this review slightly differently. And actually at this point, I haven't seen any of the photos which I've taken with the camera. I dropped them all off at the lab this morning, and I'm currently waiting to get the scans back. But I thought this might give a slightly different insight on my opinion of the camera, because it will be just based on my actual experience of using it, and then later on in the video, I can sit back down and take you through the images and tell you what I do and don't like. So the first thing which is so great about this camera is the form factor. It's so unbelievably small, and I don't know if this is going to do it justice because I don't have any other 35mm point and shoots to compare it to right now, but this truly is the kind of most pocket sized camera that I've used. And to me, that's a pretty important thing. This has lived in my coat pocket for the last two weeks, it's always been there. And that leads you to taking more photos, and always having your camera with you, you're not going to miss any moments, and that's all because of the form factor. I have no excuses of not having a camera with me when the camera is this big, and to me, that's pretty important. That's something that I would look for in a point and shoot. Now I can't speak too much about the lens since I don't know how well it performs, but it is a 28mm, and this is something which is new to me. I'm usually shooting with a 35 But something that is nice is that you can change the aperture on the lens. This makes it really easy to change the settings, and also it's just nice to be able to change the settings on a point and shoot. And the way they've done it here, where you can just change it on the lens as opposed to on a certain dial, I think this is the best way to go about it. The next thing which is really great is the kind of function dial on the top of the camera. So it's got seven different modes on here. You've got the flash, red eye, self timer, ISO, autofocus, exposure compensation, and then the last one is hold. So what you can do is go through the menu and change the settings. So on flash you have different modes, or you could be changing the ISO or your exposure compensation and then you turn it to hold at the end once you've got your settings down and this will mean the camera remembers all of the settings which you just plugged in even if you turn your camera off and then back on and to me this is really great if I want to shoot a whole roll at a different ISO than the box speed it's so easy to do that you don't have to do any DX code hacking you just plug it in at the beginning of the roll and it remembers it's also done so neatly and in like a super simple way and this to me is just an amazing feature. And also, the little like nub thing that you use to select everything is a really great design. It doesn't add any extra bulk to the camera, you don't need a big dial. I, th I think it's just a really nicely designed camera. Also the top LCD is great, the viewfinder is great, pretty much everything about it is good. I'm really hoping that the images come out great because I want to use this camera. And I think in the end that might be worth more than the lens being the sharpest lens I've ever used. Because if I'm gonna want to use the camera, if I always want to be shooting with it, I'm going to be taking photos. And it's better to be taking photos than to be taking none. It's just got everything that I want in a really nice package. And because I do enjoy using it that much, it makes me want to shoot with it. I really hope the images are good because I want to use it again. And I think that's worth a lot because if I like using it this much, I'm going to be inclined to take loads of photos. And always carrying it around because I enjoy shooting with it is just going to lead to more opportunities which leads to better photos. So yeah, I'll pass you on to the future now. Hopefully the photos are good. With the new year just starting, it's a perfect time to set yourself some goals and learn something new. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership to a vast variety of online classes across a bunch of different fields. Whether you're interested in learning more about photography or filmmaking, or you want to pick up something completely new, there's so much to explore. Something that I think is a really great idea to welcome the new year with is Thomas Frank's course about building habits and productivity, something that will in turn help you set yourself up for the rest of the year. I've also been checking out Ryan Booth's course on filmmaking. Since this year, I told myself that I'd try and make my video production even better. So this is a great way to try and learn something new. So if you want to check out Skillshare, click the link in the description to get two months of premium membership and explore your creativity. Hello, welcome to my desk. I've just got the photos back and put them through Lightroom had a look at them all, and I'm pretty happy. I think they look pretty good. 
So all of these photos were shot on Kodak Gold 200. And I set the ISO on the camera to 100 and had it developed as normal. So they've all been overexposed by one stop. So the first set of photos are from a walk through the new forest of my friends Milo and Alfie. And it was quite a cloudy and glum day and it looked like it could have been raining at any point. Like it wasn't really the ideal conditions you'd have in your head for photography. And I can't believe how nice this came out. Like it rendered the scene so well. The vegetation looks so rich, warm and earthy. And I just really like it. I don't know whether this is the film or the camera, but yeah, I'm really happy with how these look. One thing that really sticks out to me about the images is that there is some heavy vignetting, which I'm guessing is probably more apparent when you're shooting at 3.5. Um, and this is probably made more extreme by the fact it is a 28mm lens. And it is noticeable. But I can't say that it bothers me too much. I think that sometimes vignetting can be quite nice and it really does draw your eyes in to the centre of the image. And I think when you're using a wider lens like the 28, that can be quite nice because it there is a lot of kind of field of view. So the camera didn't really miss focus at all across the four rolls, which is pretty impressive. However, there were a few photos which are blurry, but I think this is because of the shutter speed, uh, and this was probably also because I was walking when I took them. And I can't really see this being a problem in the future, because it's pretty easy just to learn from my mistakes. You shouldn't take photos whilst you're doing your hike, you should just stop and take it. I'm also impressed at how close the focus works. I took some photos of my dog, and I was expecting for one of these to actually not make focus because I was pretty close. And another thing about this is how nice the depth of field fall off looks. When you're this close at 3.5, it just kind of, I don't know, it's a very gradual, pleasing depth of field. And it's not super like crazy blurry. It's just a really nice gradual fall off. And I'd really like to try and shoot this more with some portraits because I think it could come out really nicely. I don't think I really could have asked for much more. The photos came out pretty much exactly how I wanted them to. And maybe for the first time ever, I've really enjoyed shooting with a 28mm lens. And I don't know whether this is because of the way that I shoot with a point and shoot as opposed to a different camera, but I haven't had much success with a 28 before. So it's pretty relieving to know that I've got on well with it. And yeah, I've been looking to buy this camera for over a year, I've had a save search on eBay, waiting for the right one to come up, and I'm very relieved to announce that it's going straight back into my coat pocket, and it's not leaving there for the foreseeable future. I'm quickly now editing this video because I'm about to leave to go to Denmark, so expect some sort of fun travel related taking photos things with some of my friends. So, uh, see you soon.